Hello, welcome to episode 8 of Attributes and Vops inside of Houdini series. In this one, we'll be talking about important things like attribute inheritance, which means that uh, attributes that we can create at the beginning of our networks can be used down the line of our networks. So what this means is that we can actually basically, for example, draw a curve and we will have as a result kind of like this procedural fence going on. Just an example to showcase what it can do. So as per usual, uh, let's start with the beginning and start creating our things. So first things first, I want to just explain a little bit about the attribute inheritance. What does that maybe even mean? So let's create a sphere. Let's make it a primitive, give it a color. For example, make it yellow, which will be 110, something like this. And we get a grade, we copy to points. I think uh, it goes like this. Press L to layout. And as you can see, the attributes of color in the copies has been copied as well. So basically we inherited the attribute of color, even though copy to points, basically it says that it can copy using these attributes and whatnot. So that's one way to look at it. Another way, let's get our friend Squab, as per usual. Uh, he's our test subject, so to speak. If I hold down spacebar, press 5, you will see that indeed we have the UVs. And of course, we have some sort of a material. However, if we subdivide, you will see that, well, nothing is really happening. So if we go back, we will see that uh, we previously discussed that UV is just an attribute, right? So you will see that if we subdivide our geometry, the vertex attribute of UV has been inherited by the subdivided geometry. So basically it reads anything it came with before and it uses it down the line again. If you created some sort of an attribute at the top of your network, it just means that you can use it later in your network. So let's do that. Again, let's start with the line here and let's start with a curve, draw curve, right? So that's, that's okay. So we enable the line and I enable the curve actually, press enter and let's start drawing something like this. It doesn't really matter what we draw, just so that we have something to copy to points to. Again, geometry will be our line and the target points will be basically our curve. Okay, so that does not look very good. What we're gonna do is transform our curve because curve is just the geometry. And here we go. So the thing I wanna showcase is that you can actually connect points using the nodes called add. So if we, uh, if we just now add something to our line, nothing will really happen. What we need is, let's do it like that, right? So we go to polygons by group, and you will see we have some sort of a zigzag going on. However, how do we connect each of the points of this line? And let me enable it. Here you can see what we have point number what, zero <laughs> and point number one. If I enable the visualization, you'll see that we have zero and one. So let's make, let's say, four points. We have zero, one, two, and three. Together makes four points. Okay, so when we copy the points, we will see that the numbers of our points are, well, I wouldn't call it all over the place, but you'll see that obviously it starts with zero, but as we go further and further with our copies, you'll see that we have like 88, 89, 90, 91, and it goes on and on and on. So that is why when we add um, by group, for example, it creates this zigzag line because after, let's say, point number 171 comes the point number 172. And basically the add, whoops, the add says, okay, so basically since the number is increasing and the obvious points after this one is this one based on the numbering, of course, we should connect them, and that's what is getting us this zigzagging behavior. However, we can 
connect them by attribute. However, right now, we don't have any attribute that we connect, can connect with. How do we create one? You guessed it right, we go into attribute wap. And attribute wap will be dropped right after the line. What we're gonna do is we will write the number, uh, I mean, not number of points, but points number, right? These ones, zero, one, two, and three, into some sort of um, attribute that we can create a name however we want. So press tab, bind export, and we can name this attribute however we want. For example, I find Mandalorian frustratingly predictable. Since we are dealing with the numbers, it shouldn't be float, it should be integer. So we connect our points number and we convert using the bind export, right? So it reads the point number and it creates the attributes I find Mandalorian frustratingly predictable. Now, what we can see is that we actually have two point attributes, the Mandalorian thing and the position, because the numbering was not explicitly created. So we can actually see in the geometry spreadsheet, if we go to our points, you will see that the point number zero has the predictable frustrating Mandalorian, again, zero. Point number one is attribute one. So basically it works as expected. Now, how do we use that? Again, remember when we do the copy to points, our frustrating Mandalorian is getting copied as well. So when we do the add, we can actually connect it by attribute name, which we created before. And as you will see immediately, you will see that we indeed have this working just fine. Ironically, um, in the nodes named add, you can actually delete the geometry, but keep the points. So you can have this some sort of interesting effect. However, I want it to be looking like kind of a fence. So what we do is resample, drop it here. And if you remember, resample, what it does, it basically gets the geometry and we can dictate how many segments we have, increase or decrease the resolution. And if we go back to our ad, indeed, we have this sort of a structure. And if we do the polywire, you will see that this is perfection of procedural modeling. Now, jokes aside, uh, obviously you can go back to stroke, delete this one. You can basically draw whatever you want and you will see that the result immediately builds itself and you have the useful geometry instead of that. So if you want to make this a little bit more realistic, of course, uh, you can go and delete the geometry, right? And you can copy the parts, the vertical parts of fence to those points, to these points, right? Let me enable to copy the vertical elements to these points. And then you delete those and you can sweep something rectangular along these lines to get the planks for your fence. And then of course you will just merge it and get the result you want. So anyway, that was the overview of using attributes throughout your network, how you can utilize your personal attributes, arbitrary ones, and make use of it for, for example, procedural modeling. Hopefully you enjoyed the lesson. And if you're interested in seeing more, Maybe check out the Patreon page because it has all the scene files, um, all the HDAs, all the networks for you to jump inside and maybe follow along. If you're not interested, that's fine. Just, you know, I'm hoping to see you in the next videos. Hope you have a nice day and goodbye.